Hey everyone, let's talk about hosting Next.js. So let's say you have a Next.js app or website and now you have to make a decision, how am I going to host it so that other people can access it? So you have a couple of options and these options have changed in the past few years. So I think these days you have more options and actually uh, some of these options make self-hosting Next.js even more attractive. But let's actually zoom out a little bit and see what the options are that you actually have. So let's review the options that you have. It's not only about how easy it is to deploy. It's also about how expensive it is and if all the features in a Next.js app are still supported. So you have the option to put your app on a managed platform. So a lot of things are taken care of for you. Examples of these platforms are, for example, for Sal or Netlify. They are all about trying to make it as easy as possible for you to get the app deployed, but also give you a lot of infrastructure and other features. And so the whole deployment process is uh, very smooth, actually. So I'm calling it managed hosting. And typically all the features are supported. It's very smooth. It's all taken care of for you. You get a bunch of infrastructure out of the box. There's a lot of things you get out of the box and ultimately you will pay some money for that and i think it's a fair offer so that might be the way to go in some circumstances it allows you to deploy and host an app very easily it's very comfortable very smooth so that may be the way to go however there are also options to do self-hosting so self-hosting means we are going to take matters into our own hands so with self-hosting you can have more control over the hosting and the deployment process and also it can be more cost effective in some circumstances with self-hosting Typically, we can make it more cost effective, but we just have to set up some things ourselves. So it comes with a little bit more friction in terms of setup, but that may be worth it in some circumstances as well. So, so let's take a look at self-hosting because this has actually changed. There are actually quite a few options these days. So the options that you have are uh, a static export as it's called. We can actually also just host Next.js as a Node.js application on a VPS. We can also dockerize a Next.js application and host that on a VPS. And these days we can also use Coolify or Dockploy. They are two separate options to deploy and host it on a VPS as well. Of course, I'm using a VPS as an example here, but it can also be a dedicated server. However, typically you don't need a whole dedicated server. You typically only need a virtualized part of that just a piece of it and it allows you to set up an operating system and so with a vps you typically don't have a whole server you just have a virtualized piece of it which is more efficient and i would say that's more common but let's actually take a look at these options so first of all you can do a so-called static export so if i have a next.js application i have an example app here um, it's just a home page which is a server component I'm also, I also have the option here to get data from a so-called server action. So this is another server-side feature that Next.js offers. If I click on that, you can see we get a result here from a server action, a button here for an API route. So you can see I'm also getting data here from an route handler, right? So these are the common server-side features that a Next.js app has. Now I can technically create a so-called static export out of this. If I want to do that, I have to go to my next config and I have to mark this as output export. I can run npm run build and it will create an optimized production build. It runs into an issue here with my route handler. So with a static export, if we take a look here, what you will essentially get is just plain HTML, CSS and JavaScript files. So you will not be able to use all of these server-side features that Next.js offers. So you can see uh, under unsupported features here, something for route handlers, but also right, all of these other options are not gonna be right, also server actions here. So a lot of things are simply Simply not supported this way. However, it does give you a super simple HTML, CSS, and JavaScript setup, which you can then host anywhere where that is accepted, which is pretty much everywhere. That may be an option, but of course, the reason that we're using Next.js is partly because it allows us to use these server-side features together with a front end. So you have like a front end and a back end in one app. It simplifies a lot of things. So you kind of lose that if you use the static export option. So it's not very common to see that. So if we can, we would still like to have that server-side capability. So about two years ago, actually, I started talking about self-hosting Next.js and initially we tried doing it just as a plain Node.js app 
on a VPS. Now this worked, but it was quite tricky to set it up. So in this case, we had to set up Nginx and PM2, a lot of friction actually to make this work properly on a VPS. So this is mostly going to be suitable if you are very savvy with servers and using all of those tools to make it work properly. So we can host Next.js as a plain Node.js app. You can see Next.js can be deployed to any provider that supports Node.js. In that case, of course, we can remove this from our next convec on a VPS, let's say, we can then simply run a build. So npm run build, which will create a build again. And then to start the app, you do not do npm run dev, you, you do npm run start, right? So if we take a look at package.json here, I would first build the app. And then to actually run the build version, you have to do the start script here. But in most cases, actually, we want to use one of these other options. So one other option that I also showed you is how to dockerize it and then put it on a VPS. So we can actually dockerize Next.js. So we can deploy Next.js as a Node.js server like that, but we can also dockerize Next.js. On the Next.js documentation, they actually show you a template for that. So if you go there, they have an example here with Docker. I showed you this in another video, and I have to say that this option is much easier than this one. However, there is still quite a bit of friction um, you still need to know your way a little bit around Docker and you still have to run some terminal commands on the VPS. But I would say this is preferable over this. Uh, as long as you know a little bit about Docker and you're familiar with that, this is the way to go. Now, what if you're not familiar with Docker? You're actually not that familiar with VPS at all. Well, these days, I would say in the past year or so, maybe half a year, I would say Coolify and Docploy have become some possible options for you that I think make self-hosting much more realistic for a lot of people. Even if you don't know that much about uh, servers or VPNs, Coolify and Doc Docploy simplify a lot. So they are two separate options, right? So Coolify, this is their website, and this is Docploy, this is their website. They basically do some of the things that we had to do ourselves by using these two options they basically do that for us under the hood so they actually give us a nice uh, admin panel for example where we can configure things and and they will do basically all the hard things under the hood for us so with this in my view self-hosting on a vps becomes much more realistic for a lot of people so with these three options we can keep our server-side features. And out of these three options, I would have to say that Coolify or Docploy is going to be preferable for most people. So let's actually just take a look at how we can deploy Coolify to a VPS. And let's see if all of these features would still work on that VPS. So we will need a VPS from somewhere. And yes, Hostinger is sponsoring this video. But the reason I like using Hostinger is because they already have a Coolify VPS template out of the box, as well as a Docploy VPS template. So this means that we are not going to do something weird on our VPS. In fact, we don't even have to do much setup because it's already handled for me by Hostinger. And it also signals to me at least that Hostinger is on the cutting edge of hosting Next.js application. So they are already familiar with what we're doing here. I think that's a major plus for picking hosting or for your VPS. Let me quickly set up a VPS here. You can find a link in the description. And if you scroll down here, you can find their VPS plans here. I had a good time trying the KVM2 plan for uh, hosting Next.js, but if you need more resources, of course, you can also pick one of these more powerful plans. However, I actually had a good time using these resources. So I will go with this plan uh, for this video. When you sign up for a plan here, you can use my coupon code, which is all uppercase byte grad. So if you apply that coupon code, you get a good deal here. So you can find a link in the description and the coupon code as well. Yes, byte grad does get a commission, of course. Yeah, I think hosting her with the template is a good option. Okay, so then here on the left side, we can pick our server location. Okay, I, I will leave the default for the location. But here we can pick our operating system. We can also pick it later, but um, just to show you that we have the option for Coolify here, you can see there is the option for Coolify and also an option for Docploy, right? So I would say these are the easiest way as of recording to deploy your Next.js app to a VPS. So in this video, let's go with Coolify here. It will actually be a Ubuntu setup here, but we don't have to do much as you'll see. All right, after paying, I will go through the setup wizard. So let me walk you through it as well. So they offer some malware scanner. You can pick that or not if you want. Actually, yeah, sure, why not? Okay, so here we need to have a password here. You may need this later to actually log into the VPS. Okay, make sure you don't show it to anyone else. And let's continue here. Okay, we will finish the 
gonna set up and then it's gonna provision the resources for me so we just have to wait a minute or so all right so after a minute or so we can access our actual vps all right so you can see here i have one vps it's the coolify template on ubuntu and to actually access it we can click on manage panel okay so it would just use the IP address of the VPS on port 8000 and it doesn't have HTTPS yet, but we'll get to that in a second. All right, so here you can see I now get this Coolify admin dashboard and the first time you go here, it will ask us to create a an account for the root user. So it's important that you're the first one that actually accesses this because here you can create the admin user essentially so i will just say admin and i will just say support at gmail all right so i just signed up and now we have the onboarding here for coolify so let's take a look so coolify has an explanation here all right so we're going to deploy a next.js application those are essentially resources we can deploy it on the same server as where coolify itself is running so that would be on localhost. Technically speaking, they do not recommend that. So we could also deploy Next.js on a separate, uh, actual separate server. However, if it's a small app, I think it's fine to do it uh, on localhost together with the Coolify. Okay, so we're going to create our first project here just to combine the resources that we'll be deploying because it's not. Let's create a new resource and let's go there. Okay, all right. So here we get the admin panel view it's just let's take a look what we can do here so you can see there are also different environments um, we can deploy applications we can also deploy databases by the way so it's not just an app it can be all sorts of things including different services now what do we want to deploy here well it's a next.js application but it's currently running on my local computer it's going to be easier to deploy this over git and it can be a public repo or a private repo but let's actually deploy it to github first so i will just call this next.js app coolify i'll make it private and create it right here okay now i will uh, copy this and just paste it all in one go and it will now have published this to github okay so now i have this app on my github account how do i connect this to coolify well we can do one of these let's actually go with the github app option it needs to add a so-called github application to our account so let's do that right here i will just leave the default settings all right so then here uh, we can set up a webhook so basically this will also help when we redeploy so if we make a change we will push it to github and then our coolify instance will be notified of that so it can automatically redeploy our app so we will register this okay so it's, it creates a github app for my account okay okay so now we have this github app now we actually need to pick the repositories we want to connect here so i like to be uh, you can do all but i like to be a little bit selective here so that was called the next.js app coolify okay so it wants these permissions and i will install that all right so now here we have um an overview again okay i will just click save and now we should be able to go to our project here so i will go to my first project i will add a new resource and now i can click on private repository we can pick the app that we just installed i can load the repositories here and you can see we get one here i will just leave the default right next year has run some port 3000 i will leave this right here now we get the options basically for our next.js app here we can set up things like the domain and so on but let's actually just try deploying it for the first time you can see it starts running now and it will do a lot of things that we had to do ourselves previously so previously we had to set up docker for example or have to install it as a node.js application we were doing uh, pm2 things like that that's a lot of work and now we have all of these options here just available in a ui and not just for deploying next.js we can also install a database we can do other things here as well okay but let's actually wait a minute but now it's doing a lot of things that we were doing before for us under the hood all right and after a minute or so it looks good we see all right now if we go to configuration here you will see the current domain that we can use to actually view the app it's a bit of a strange domain name but it will work for now and you can see now i have my next.js app running on a vps managed here with uh managed here with coolify at least it looks good does it still behave in the same way if i click on get data from server action we still get this data so it's still working if i click on this one it also still works so now we have a full next.js application with the server side capability running live on the internet uh, self-hosted on a vps using coolify and if you've watched some of my other videos you know this is much easier than what we did before so i would say definitely check out hosting or with their coolify or docploy template uh, this is actually a really good vps deployment uh, experience now from here we can change many other things uh, we can change all of these options here but one of the things i like is now let's say i make a change right let's say i want to have a bunch of these exclamation marks after a home page so now i updated it here locally on my computer so now 
if I uh, clear this out, if I try to uh, add this, add exclamation marks, and I'm going to push this again to my repo. Okay, so I just pushed, and now if I take a look at my deployments here, you can see Coolify picked up on that and it has automatically scheduled another deployment here. You can see it's deploying again, right? So actually, uh, I made a small mistake initially, so actually I already had to redeploy once. But now because of those exclamation marks, you can see it's redeploying this. So, so when you make a change now and, and push to the GitHub repo, it will automatically redeploy as well. This was also quite tricky to set up manually ourselves. You can see now it's finished. Now if I refresh here, you can see the update is live. Now one other thing, of course, is also to have a custom domain. So we don't have this strange looking domain. Now Hostinger offers uh, domains as well. So I actually already bought a domain from Hostinger here. So now I have that in my account. I can then also manage the DNS here for that domain. By default, I believe it already has an A record. So I actually just removed that. I'm going to add a new A record for the root pointing to the IP address of my VPN. So to see the IP address, we can go back to the VPS view here on Hostinger. If you scroll down a little bit, you can find all of the VPS details, including the IP. So I will just paste, copy that, add that right here. So the root points to the IP address of the VPS. I will add that as a record. That won't work yet. We also need to go here. So here on the Coolify part, Coolify needs to know which resource to sort of route that to. So we want to say that for this app, we want to have the domain https bytegradcourses.com. We may also want to add the www version, although we want to be able to redirect that, if we, although we also perhaps want to redirect. But let's actually keep this here. Now here we can also specify that, let's say I only want to redirect to non-www. So actually I may also want to remove this, but let's confirm this. I will confirm this. Okay, so I need to copy this at the direction. So here it says, please restart or redeploy to add to apply the new configuration. Okay, so I do have to redeploy to Okay, so actually I had to press enter here uh, so that the settings were applied and then redeploy again. And now when that redeployment is finished, when I go to Bytegrad courses, my custom domain name, including HTTPS, if I go there, you can see it's running here and all the features here still work. So now we have a pretty sophisticated setup with just a few clicks and previously this was so much work to do on a VPS but thanks to Coolify and also Dogploy this is actually a really good experience and there's many other things we can configure here but I think you get the point which is that uh, if you want to self-host on a VPS make sure to check out Coolify also Dogploy yeah I had a good time using Hostinger for the VPS really like their templates that you get out of the box so I want to thank Hostinger for sponsoring the video. I want to thank you for watching. Hopefully it helps you out with hosting your app. And then I hope to see you in the next video. Have a nice day.